Hello Haskell folks, welcome to another Haskell video. Today we're going to refactor some Haskell code um, using the list monad and some awesome do, do notation. Um, hope you enjoy it and let's dive into the code right away. So basically we have a function that it's called refine output that takes um, a list of output declarations and we want to output a list of intermediate outputs. So the intermediate output looks like this. This is a type that it, we created ourselves. And if we have a look at the output declarations, we see that every output declaration, remember we have a list of them, has some paths. And each path has preconditions, postconditions, and some steps. And every postcondition is a Haskell expression which we're not going to dive into it because it's it's a bit long to, to explain. But basically we have a list of preconditions and a list of postconditions and we have to treat them individually and add them into our intermediate output. So we need to refine this. So the first approach I came up with um, was of course lots of concat maps because if a declaration has a path and a path has a list of things and that list of things has more list of things then you end up with this code, that you have one concat map, one flat map or bind operator here in Haskell. And then I needed to create individual help functions, auxiliary functions to deal with all this messy code. And at some point I really ran out of names and I didn't know how to uh, name this function because they're just basically functions that do a thing and pass the rest of the things to the next function, the, to the next function. So in one of the pull request reviews from my uh, great colleague Alejandro, he suggested, why don't you use um, the list monad and, and do notation? And it turned out to be a great code, and I think we can learn lots from that. So let's start refactoring that together. So the first thing we're going to do is obviously start with do notation. And then we're going to start removing all these uh, auxiliary functions to try to have as flat of a definition of a function as possible. So the first thing is we're going to do is we're going to we're going to need some declarations here, our list of decals, and then we're going to need a function that takes n all of, any of these and does a thing. So let's take this out. And here we use the back arrow operator from Haskell and we say for each declaration of the, of the list, we're going to do something. This is what this arrow in the context of the list monad means. And now we have easy access to the paths, to the line number, the column number and the offset, which are where values that we were using before. And we really no longer need this function. Okay, so what now? Well, we, we want to refactor this out so that we don't need to use any extra concat maps. But of course, um, it says that the last line of a do block must return something. So we're going to say pure nothing. And this does not work, obviously, because what we need to re return at the end of our do notation is actually an intermediate output uh, data type. So what we're going to do is to copy it from here and then return it here. Let's clean this up a little. And there are some things that we have as some things that we don't have right now. So let's save. Um, I think we can safely remove this now. Okay. And then there are some things that we don't have yet. For example, the line number we have it is, it comes from the location from here. It's SL instead of line number. Column number is SC. Uh, I'm not the one that, that put the names on, of the variable. So um, that's on Alejandro's blame. And then we need to do something here with the preconditions. For the moment, we're going to leave it empty. We're going to have an error message, which is this text, and we need an output type. We're just going to say warning for the moment, and we'll add it to do. Um, if you have a look at this type of exception or this type of warning that we want to output, it's a 
data type that we defined ourselves also is a sum type and we define that this error message can be an info message or a warning or a strong warning or an error of that all those those sorts of things okay so now we have success successfully removed one or two of the functions so let's treat now the preconditions well the preconditions well no we need something else ah yes so now for each path we want to call this path to output function to access the preconditions and the postconditions so we repeat the same thing we can remove this pattern match from here and put it here and say for each of the paths that have in the previous pattern match, I want to pattern match on the pre and the post. So now we have easy access to the preconditions and the post conditions, which is a list of expressions as we mentioned before. And now what? Well, now we can remove this also auxiliary function. So we got rid of all the nonsense functions that we use as intermediate, uh, for which I have to came up with weird names from them. And now we need to decide what to do with them. The first thing we're going to do is to treat the preconditions because it's the easy way. So preconditions never change. We just need to call this function. Let's add a type signature to it. Um, it takes a list of expressions and returns a list of text. Okay. I thought I had the type function before. Great. And now, since they don't change, so this is a, this is a mapping of one to one. We can say um, let treated precons is equal to treat preconditions of pre. Great. And now we can use this binding here, and it works. And now we need to decide what are we going to do with the post conditions. Well, as you might have noticed, we have also an auxiliary function that we do need, the treat post conditions function. But uh, as we mentioned, every post condition can return a list of other possible exceptions. So um, we're going to need an other pattern match that we just deleted. Okay, but let me take it back. Remember that we have this beautiful function in which we were treating every post condition and then doing a pattern match or um, unwrapping this tuple to get the output type and the error message of every single post condition. So we can take this back from the git and we can say this and then we use the back arrow again to treat the post conditions but we have some something weird going on. Well, first of all, post conditions is a list of expressions. And what we need to do is we need to change the signature of this function to be a function that goes from one expression to a list of possible um, errors. Okay, so in this case, we just return a list with one element. And in the case that we have values, this was code from before that I didn't explain that it's not important. For each value that we have, we want to map it to vowels. Okay. And now we need to use tuple sections, which Visual Studio Code is going to add for us. Great. And now this function should work. So now we have one function that takes one expression and returns a list of output types and texts. And now we can do this, treat post conditions, and flat, flat map it. This is the only flat map that we're going to use. And I think this is the other way around. Oh, oh my goodness, I don't know how to type. Perfect. So now we pipe it, so to speak. And now we have for every single expression that we receive from posts, please unfold it, so to speak, or deconstruct it in this pattern match and give me every type, every output type and every error message. So now we can delete this code back. We have the output type here and now the error message is also here. Okay, this looks fine. Now let's see if this works. 
and compiles. So in the meantime, as you see, we have refactored all the auxiliary functions out. Now it's, it's flatter, the end result. We just one single do and one pure to return the intermediate representation and we got rid of all the uh, intermediate concat maps or flat maps that we needed just by using the list monad and the do notation, which looks very, very great. Okay, so it compiles, it works. I hope you enjoy the video and see you in the next Haskell video.